We have our first caller on the telephone right now. Julie is calling from Petawawa. Hi, Julie. Hi there. How are you today? Not too bad, thanks. What's your question? Well, I was rear-ended in an automobile accident in October of 08, mm -hmm. and while undergoing treatment, I was rear-ended again in August of 09. And I just wondered if you could discuss some settlement issues uh, with me. I'm still undergoing treatment now as well. Okay, and who is it that you want to settle with? Is it the your own insurance company? I wasn't really wanting to settle, but my own insurance company did um, propose settling, and as well as the second person that uh, that hit me, their insurance company proposed it as well. Right, so for your own insurance, just for the viewers, we're talking about uh, accident benefits that you get through your own insurance company, regardless of who's at fault. Those medical benefits last for 10 years, and you don't have to settle. You never have to settle. Mm -hmm. But it, there comes a point where the insurance company often approaches you to settle. Right. Um, Your own or others or you, both? Well, or both. But right now, talking about the accident benefits, um, you know, because they last for the 10 years, you are perfectly entitled to let it keep going, to keep submitting treatment plans, have them approved or denied, be assessed, and continue that until the benefits run out or the time runs out. Mm -hmm. um, there are advantages to settling, like you are in control of the money, um, but you have to make sure that you settle for enough. Obviously, any settlement is going to be a compromise. Yeah. But, and uh, do you yeah. work with a person like you, a lawyer like yourself, to figure out if, the, if that's, in fact, uh, well, what you should be settling for? I mean, certainly we do that with our clients, but not everybody needs a personal injury lawyer to settle their accident benefits case. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we do take a percentage. And so sometimes you're better off doing it yourself. Right. As long as you don't shortchange yourself. Yeah. Like, what you've got to do is figure out, and you can ask the insurance company, how much have I spent in each year since my accident? And, and then you have a number and you can figure out, okay, well then, for the next uh, remaining 10 years, I'm likely to spend that much. And then you can do the math and figure it out. If you're receiving income replacement benefits, make sure you factor that in too. Right. Um, right. Because, uh, you know, you know that the first deal that they offer you is not the best deal for you. It's always something you've got to negotiate. That's right. Um, always. So, always. So do not be afraid to go back with a number and have it be a number that's higher than the number you're willing to accept. All right. Patricia's on the phone from Round Lake. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. What's your question today? Well, my question is, if I had a vacation home and I was renting it um, um, seasonally, say summer, uh, maybe at Christmas, New Year's, etc., mm -hmm. um, and someone trips on a stone, I, I, I say I've got everything all the ice is cleared and everything right. uh, in the summer you know, everything is looking good but someone trips on a stone um, or falls right uh, possibly I, maybe they trip over their own foot um, maybe they missed a, a step going down the stairs right um, am I responsible for that uh, do I need specific liability insurance yes so and you're you're the cottage owner let's say that's right right and yeah. you someone else is renting it from you and they get injured yeah and the answer to that is yes you are responsible I've had that exact case where people have been injured at a cottage where they've where they've been renting. I mean, the way you have talked about the maintenance that you do of your property, you know, it sounds like probably they wouldn't be able to prove negligence, but you never know. And you certainly, as a, as a property owner, you want to keep, especially a rental property owner, you want to make sure you keep logs of what you do to maintain the property. Is that right? You should write it down? That's right. So every year, the annual maintenance that you do, that kind of thing. Um, you want to make sure that, you know, fix the cobblestones, check this, check uh -huh. that. Have a checklist that That's you a good go point. through. That's a good point. The other thing is you asked about uh, what kind of insurance you should have. Um, if your property is insured, you do have liability insurance, yes. but a lot of people do not have enough. Now that, you know, now that we all know that if somebody becomes a quadriplegic or a paraplegic, the damages are going to be upwards of $5 million. The million dollar policies most of us have are not enough are not enough i mean it depends what kind of risk taker you are and it depends what assets you have that would be exposed but you want to make sure that if you're renting this out for for money first of all that your insurance company knows that yes and secondly that uh, you have enough insurance all right